Welcome back, casual gardeners. Do you have a garden? Do you want a garden? Do you want ants? Because that's how you get ants. You're going to get ants. There's a lot of misinformation about ants on the internet, and my goal today is to correct some of that. Make sure you keep watching for the research results that I found. I was pretty surprised by some of it. Most ant species are either indifferent to or protective of the plants in our gardens. In fact, some plants will produce nectar secretions specifically for the ants. So these are secretions that happen outside of the flowers. Some ants go further and grow fatty nodules that attract the ants to feed them. And some plants will go so far as to grow specialized structures on their stems or leaves for ants to actually live in. There are some rare cases where an ant colony digging underneath a plant will improve drainage in the soil so much that too much water drains away and the plant dries out and dies. But in most cases, ant digging is more helpful than it is harmful to the plants in our gardens. Unless you live somewhere in the world where you know that there is a specific species of ant that harms plants, this is just false. Maybe you've seen a dead plant in your garden covered with ants. And you might have thought, that's their fault. They killed that plant. But it could be that those ants are there because they were hunting and eating whatever it was that was actually killing your plant. And they just didn't do their job fast enough. Not their fault. You didn't notice that problem before it was too late either. Ants in your garden are as likely to eat aphids as they are to protect them. It's true that some ant species will farm and protect aphids in the garden. But just because we see an ant eating honeydew, that doesn't mean that the ant is farming the aphid. Every ant will take advantage of the honeydew secretion of aphids and other sap-sucking creatures. They're almost perfect ant food, but many of them also eat the aphid that honeydewed it. Whether or not your aphids are being farmed by ants, treatment for aphids is the same. Just hose them off with a jet of water. If you use pesticides, you will knock down beneficial organisms as well as the aphids, so you don't want to do that. There is a thing called aphid population rebound, where plants that have been treated with pesticides to remove aphids can sometimes have an even bigger problem with aphids after the fact than they would have had if you never used pesticides at all. I am 100% sure that the ants in your garden are attracted to aphids, but that doesn't mean that you can blame the aphids in your garden on the ants. Some ants will eat some seeds. It's entirely possible that the ants in your garden are collecting some of your seeds that you're planting and carrying them back to their nest. Ants will rarely eat most or all of your seeds, however. They're just gonna reduce their number a little bit. If you're planting enough seed to account for failed germination, you're probably gonna be fine. There are ancient agreements between the plants and the ants. Agreements dating back to before the very first human walked the plains of Africa. Plants will often produce a specialized secretion on seed coats that is attractive to ants. They, they smell it and they're like, ah, I want this. And they carry the seed away by design. The plant wants it to happen. By carrying the seed back to their nest, the ants usually don't get around to eating all of the seeds and some of them wind up being thrown away in the ant midden. That is the ideal place for seed germination because it's sitting in a pile of sweet, sweet ant trash. Some plants will go even further and they will produce a specialized structure on their seed called an eliastomer. And eliastomers are, they're like ant crack. I said, it's so good, it's like crack. <laughs> they ensure that the ants are going to pick up the seed because they're getting a food reward for it that's even better than the seed itself. Food bribes are incredibly useful. That's why sometimes your boss buys you pizza. It gets stuff done. No such thing as a free lunch, right? You can completely bypass the problem of ants taking some of your seed by simply germinating your seeds and then transplanting them. I found a really interesting meta-analysis of the effects of ants in horticulture published by the Royal Society. I'll be sure to link to that in the description of the video. So the researchers found that the ants tended to reduce the non-honeydew producing pests in the crops that they are managing 
while they do increase the honeydew producing pests, so you do get more aphids with ants. Ants were especially effective at decreasing non-honeydew producing populations in more mixed plantings. So what that tells us is that ants in a garden environment are going to be a lot more efficient at pest control than ants in a monoculture like a factory farm. Despite their negative impact on other pest predators, the damage from non-honeydew producing and honeydew producing pests in crops that were populated by ants actually decreased, which shows us that even though ants increase the number of little suckers chewing on our plants, the total damage from that will go down with ant management. And that's actually the bit of the research that surprised me the most, because you wouldn't think it. It seems a little counterintuitive that even though the ants are encouraging aphids, they're not causing more damage from the aphids. Specialist predators, especially in mixed plantings, tend to develop chemical defenses from ant predation. So even though ants will decrease other general predator populations in your garden, like you'll have fewer praying mantises or fewer centipedes, you'll still have a decent population of things like parasitoid wasps and um, I think ladybugs, because they're beetles, they're generally okay with it as well. Ants are especially good at reducing caterpillar populations. They're not so hot when it comes to reducing beetle populations. And they also found that ants improve the total harvest. I think there was one crop where they found that they increased the harvest by 49% compared to a similar plot with um, no ants. And the more established the ant colony is in your garden, the better the improvement in harvest appears to be. Is everything going with you ants today? So these researchers concluded that ants can be more beneficial and efficient in the garden than many applied pesticides. And they do it with far fewer environmental costs. And what you want is ant syrup. There are a lot of um, cures for ants in the garden that seem to make sense, but actually they don't make any sense at all if you, if you know a little bit of basic ant physiology or um, physical science. Here's some of the more popular ones that I found, and we're going to debunk those because I don't want you wasting your time, especially since you should be encouraging ants in your garden, unless they're fire ants. Ants. Mexican terrorist ants. So the idea with cornmeal is that it's a dry food and the ants are going to eat it and then when it encounters the moisture in their stomach it will expand and rupture their internal organs and kill them. The problem with that is think about how you eat. When you eat a dry cracker is it still dry when it gets to your stomach? No. You've mixed that cracker with digestive juices from the moment it winds up in your mouth. By the time you're swallowing it, it's a wet gooey glob. It's not dry food anymore. Even if it were dry food and it did expand, our stomachs are not perfectly sealed. They've got openings at both ends. That stuff would squirt out one end or the other. Oh, okay. Better out than in. Ants are the same way. They don't swallow things dry. They do wet things with their little ant saliva. And so you're not going to explode anything's internal organs by feeding it dry food. You're just not. Some say pouring boiling water on an anthill will kill the anthill. And it kind of makes sense, right? It's like a castle defense. You're on the wall of your castle and you're pouring boiling oil on the soldiers that are trying to scale your walls. And it's very heroic. But it has the same problem that the castle defense does. You're going to kill some ants, just like you are going to seriously burn and possibly kill some of those invaders on your castle wall, but you don't kill all of the ants. Matter has thermal mass. There's a certain amount of heat energy it can absorb. Soil has a pretty high thermal mass. So you've got your boiling water. It's 100 degrees Celsius. You've got your, your soil. It's Maybe it's war a warm day and it's all the way up to 20 degrees Celsius a foot down. Okay, by the time you've poured that hot water onto the soil and it's like a few inches down, its temperature will have equalized a little bit with the soil. So a few inches down, you're probably somewhere like 40, 50 degrees Celsius 
It's uncomfortably warm, but it's not probably hot enough to kill the ants fast enough that they can't get away anymore. You'd have to pour gallons and gallons of water continuously without burning yourself or your feet to get an effect that goes all the way down to where the queen is and efficiently kills the colony. So what actually happens is you're going to kill a significant portion of the colony and they might decide this place sucks and they might move. So maybe instead of being under your tomato plant, they're going to be under your kohlrabi or <laughs> under your summer squash. They'll still be there. They'll, you're not eliminating a nest with boiling water. There's this idea that coffee grounds are going to um, be toxic to or discourage ants. Uh, I think this is because coffee grounds have a strong smell and we just automatically assume that all of the animals experience the world the same way we do. But odor isn't the same if you're an insect as it is if you're a mammal and is definitely not the same if you're an ant as it is if you're a human. So just because coffee grounds have a strong smell to us, that doesn't mean that ants are going to smell it. There's also the idea that coffee grounds, because coffee is high in caffeine, maybe the caffeine, which is a natural insecticide, will be repellent to or damaging to the ants. They're just going to move it out of their way like any other organic matter that's in the way. Lastly, you've got essential oils that are supposed to be repellent to or damaging to any insects. And you get the same problem. There's no demonstrated effect of essential oils on ants. A smell that is strong to us isn't going to be strong to them. And a smell that's repellent to us is definitely not going to be repellent to them. They've got a whole different suite of things that they like and don't like. And um, yeah, we, we really just can't judge their responses based on our own. Well, I hope you learned something about ants. I actually learned a lot about ants. I'm a pretty big nerd, but I, I really enjoyed researching for this video. Uh, let me know in the comments if you have a, a cure for ants that you would like to, um, to share. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me today in my garden, and I hope you have a wonderful time in your own. Thank you.